All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Getting to Club podcast, which is the show where you get to steal the skills and playbooks from the top 0.01% of B2B tech sales practitioners. Now, sometimes I interview them, sometimes I don't, sometimes I just share the things that I've learned from them. But in this episode today, I am going to teach you what I call the go back in time technique for great discovery calls. This is for discovery calls you run with an inbound buyer, somebody who's actively exploring solutions. And I have a question for you to tee up what this solves for. Okay. Have you ever been here before? And I'm going to be glancing up my screen as we do this. Have you ever been here before? There's typically two challenges that come with discovery calls uh, where you're trying to thaw out your buyer, so to speak. So number one, you have buyers that are very eager to talk about solutions, right? That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Uh, they might want to see a demo. They're kind of coming in hot. They are ready to go, but you need to get your you know, discovery game on. You need to unearth some business pain to get that going. And so that's kind of a hard situation to deal with. The other tough situation is cold buyers, right? Maybe you went outbound and they feel reluctant to share any pain with you and you've got to warm them up a little bit. So discovery friction usually happens. You know, those two points of friction, they usually happen because you are misaligned with where your buyer is in the buyer's journey. You're asking them questions that presuppose they're at the top of the funnel when they're at the bottom of the funnel. Or you're asking them questions that suppose they're at the bottom of the funnel when they're really at the top, right? And if I were to really simplify this, there are basically two types of buyers that you're going to start a sales cycle with. There's buyers that are actively exploring, right? They're typically inbound. They usually come to you. Those are often competitive deals. They're exploring your category of solutions. They have active pain that they're trying to solve. And then there are latent buyers right? They're not actively exploring solutions. They may have jumped on a call with you because you said something interesting. They might have pain. They might not. It might be active or latent pain, but they haven't crystallized it far enough yet to know what kind of solution they want to start exploring. So why do these distinctions matter? Well, it's because if your questions are misaligned with they are, if your questions are misaligned with where your buyer is in the buyer's journey, you are going to be met with irritation. So first example, if your buyer's at the bottom of the buyer's journey, if you're watching this on YouTube, then I have a visual for you. If you're just listening to the podcast, then ask you to use your imagination, but we're looking at kind of a, a funnel here. If your buyer's at the bottom of the journey and you ask them something like, tell me about your key challenges, in their mind, they're already past that. They're like, no, 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 I, I, I'm past that. I want to see the product. I want to talk solutions. We defined the problem and talked about all the challenges months ago. Now, another example, though, is if they're at the top of the buyer's journey, right? They have latent pain, maybe active pain, but they're not ex you know, actively exploring a solution yet. And you ask something like, what motivated you to look into this? They might say something like, well, you asked me to meet, right? I'm not looking into this. In other words, you're met with ir irritation because you're not aligning yourself or at least the first chunk of your discovery with where they are in the buyer's journey. So in this episode, in this video slash audio, depending on where you're hearing this, we're going to talk about that second situation. We're going to talk about how to deal with buyers who are actively exploring, right? They want to see your product most likely, but you need to peel back the onion and understand the pain. So the challenge is you need to uncover pain, but they're predisposed to talking about desired solutions enter the go back in time technique. And how this works is you start your discovery by asking a question that aligns with their desire to talk about solutions. Then, and only then, do you bring them back in time to discuss the original pain that set all of this in motion. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, which at least for this particular episode, I would recommend doing, you start with questions that address their buyer's journey stage, then you go back in time and ask about the original pain. So if you're looking at the visual, you start here. And for you listening to audio only, start here means you start with a question that aligns with the total bottom of the funnel. And then you go back. Then and only then do you go back to the top of the funnel and start asking about potential challenges. So here's what that could look like, right? After you set the agenda, the objective, you go through all the meet and greet and stuff like that. You've got a buyer who's coming inbound. Your first discovery question probably should sound something like this. Tell me what motivated you to look into 
blank category, right? Your category of solutions. Tell me about what motivated you to look into Gong. Tell me about what motivated you to look into P Club. Tell me about what motivated you to look into product analytics software, whatever, right? They came inbound. The point is that's exactly what they want to talk about, right? That's where they are in their buyer's journey. You're aligning your first question and respecting that fact. Now, you're not immediately going to move on. Your second step is probably to hover on that topic for a little bit. So ask one, maybe two follow-up questions. And a good one to ask would be interesting. You know, what are you aiming to accomplish with something like this? So notice we're still talking about solutions, desired outcomes. We haven't figured out what the business problem is yet. Now, what's interesting is after you've met your buyer where they stand, after you've asked those first couple questions that align with the fact that they're at the bottom of their buyer's journey, you have just earned permission to now ask about pain. Now you have to do it with the right language and I'm about to tell you exactly what that is. So now you can go back in time. Now you can go back to the top of the funnel. And the question I like to ask sounds something like this. Interesting, right? Acknowledge, you know, some of the things that you just said. Interesting. Can I go back in time with you for just a second? What was the original challenge going on in your business that caused you to prioritize looking into a solution like this to begin with? And now you're going to get them to open up the kimono, right? You've spent a few minutes respecting the fact that they're at the bottom of their funnel. You've asked a couple questions to explore it further. And now you say, all right, super interesting. Do you mind if I go back in time with you for a second? What's the origin story of this challenge, right? My guess is you probably met with your executive team a couple months ago where you all decided to prioritize this, right? You defined the problem. What did that conversation sound like? What was the original challenge you're, uh, you were trying to solve? So the point of this episode is when you start with solutions, when you start by asking about solutions, which is what in a quote unquote inbound buyer wants to talk about, you earn the right to go back to pain. You have to do it in, a, in an emotionally tactful way, right? You have to use some softening language, uh, but it works like a charm. So go give that a try. In fact, I'm going to give you a couple pieces of homework because uh, you will grow your skills when you actually put some of this stuff to use instead of just passively either watching or listening. So I've got a couple things for you. Number one, choose an upcoming call, right? Choose an upcoming discovery call where a buyer came to you, right? They maybe came inbound or, or you otherwise know they're actively exploring your solution category. Number two, plan out your first three questions, right? Make sure the first two questions are questions that address where they are in their buyer's journey, and then use the go back in time technique as your third, maybe fourth question. And then three, your third action item from watching this video or listening to this episode is after you try it, reflect and self-assess, right? Grab a notebook, uh, grab a Google doc, write three things you think went well in that interaction and then write one or two things that you can improve next time. Because here's the point, new behaviors never sound amazing the first time you try them, right? It's going to feel like getting marbles out of your mouth. And if you give up after the first time, you are leaving a lot of skill development on the table. So discipline yourself to try this a few times, get the awkwardness out of the way, start to make it a habit, try it three or four times. You're going to hit your stride, go give it a try, and I'll see you in the next episode.